Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the column buckling. So I will explain this topic with the help of an examples and figure, and it will be more easy to understand. But before going into the buckling of the columns, it's very important to understand what is slenderness, or what are the factors that affect the slenderness of the column. So to explain this slenderness topic. Let's take an example of these three images. The first one is the scale. You see here the first one, this image, which is a scale used to measure any kind of small dimensions. And the thickness of this scale is, for example, T1. So it's a very really small thick, uh, thickness material. And if I apply the load P here, for example, then what will happen? This object will try to deform. And we call it when it's deformed from its axis, if this is the loading axis or the longitudinal axis of the scale, so it will show some deformation in the lateral direction and this is known as the buckling of the scale here. So if I consider the same other object, for example, here is a window, if I apply the load here P again, what will happen due to the higher thickness of this one T2 for example, because of the higher thickness, what will happen? The deflection or the deformation in this object will be very really small. Might be like in this, it will be small to that of the scale. If this is second one and this is T2, so the deformation here X2 will be very really small as compared to the X1 if we apply the same load. Because now we have a bit thick material than that of the scale and, and in third case if I see look into the column for example this is one column and I apply the load on column this is for example P then due to the very higher thickness if I consider this is the thickness of the column T3 which is very higher than T1 and T2 then it will show a very low buckling this is X3 at the center so x3 will be smaller than x2 and x2 will be smaller than x1 why because the geometry of the object is different of course the material is different but i'm focusing here on the geometry because of the higher thickness of the material we have a lower buckling or the uh, we can see the lower deformation in the little direction which is basically buckling so lower buckling because of the higher thicknesses but keep in mind, it's only the thicknesses that determine the buckling. It's only the thicknesses, thickness of the material that determine the buckling. That's the question. No, the thickness is not the only parameter that explain the buckling of the column or of buckling of any material. Here we saw the thickness play a role in the deformation or the buckling of the material or the column. But it's not only the one parameter. There are also some other parameter that define the buckling or the little deformation of any object. So here we saw that slenderness, slenderness means how much thin the material is. The more thin the material, the more buckling will be in this material. So the other parameter that I want to explain here is for example, if I draw here, if I want to draw here three different kind of objects, for example, this is my one column, This is my second column and this is my third column. So now because of the differences lengths, if I consider this is the height of the column is H1 and this is H2 and this is H3 which is made of the steel reinforced concrete RC column. So what will happen that if I apply the same load P, for example, the load application is same on all these columns P. So what will happen that the higher dimension or the higher height or the length of the column will show a higher buckling of the column. This column will now show a less buckling. Show less buckling if I consider this is X1, for example, so it will be less than that of the 
that column if this is x2 so x2 will be greater than the x1 why because now the high height of the column is higher to that of the first column if this is the first column this is the second column and this is the third column if we have the same geometry if it is the same thickness and also the same material and now if i consider the third column which is third column here and this is h3 which is a higher height so now in this case it will show a higher deformation to that of the two columns so this deformation x in the little is known as the buckling so now x3 is way way higher than that of the x1 and x2 so it means x3 is higher than x2 and x2 is higher than x1 so the deformation or the lateral buckling is higher in longer columns it means that it's it was not only the thickness that determined the buckling of the column or any object but it was also it would it was also the height of the column that play a role in buckling of the object the third one is the material material for example if i consider if i consider one column or any object one is made of the rubber this is made of the rubber the second object is made of the plastic maybe i draw it wrong for example the second object is the same one is the same height same geometry but this one is made of plastic and the third object is the same one but is made of the concrete so what will happen now when the same load is applied p p this is p load applied so what will happen the rubber will show a very higher deformation the plastic will show a lower deformation and concrete will show a very lower deformation so if i call them if this is x1 this is x2 and this is x3 so now x1 will be higher than x2 and x2 will be higher than x3 why because now the material stiffness is important here so material stiffness means the elastic modulus the more stiff the material is the more the less will it will buckle and the lower e modulus are the lower stiff material if this is a lower stiff material low stiffness it means that it will have more buckling under the same load if you higher higher stiffness of the material what will happen it will show low buckling so these two are related to one another so the material property is also very important in determining the buckling of the in the object so hope you guys understand the buckling phenomena where three important parameters play a very important role in determining the buckling of the column or any object. So hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.